Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to Blue Collar Garage. I'll be working on my 2011 Ford Fiesta today. Uh, I got a slave cylinder that's leaking uh, brake fluid. Um, but since I got to drop the whole transmission to do that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, replace the clutch and everything along with it. So let's get started. So first thing I did was I went ahead and uh, blocked the uh, passenger rear wheel here on both sides since we're going to be jacking up the front end. So over here on the driver's side, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put my jack underneath the uh, pinch weld here. And then I'm going to jack it up. And then I'll see if I can get my jack underneath the uh, front there. So we can jack it up as high as we can go there. Okay, so with that uh, driver's side jacked up a little bit there, now I have enough clearance to get my other jack under here. And I'm going to go right on that uh, cross member there and then uh, support it with the jack and then I'll remove that jack and then we'll start jacking up as high as we can go. That way we got enough room to uh, get this transmission out and then I'll also put jack stands on each pinch weld. Okay, so now with that supported, I'm going to take out that other jack here. Now let's go ahead and continue jacking up pretty much as high as we can go. Okay, so once you get it all jacked up there, go ahead and grab your jack stands. Like I said, you want to get it jacked up uh, pretty high. That way you can uh, remove the transmission from underneath. Um, you can see I got my jack stands kind of set up. There's my other one there. So let's go ahead and uh, slowly lower this onto the jack stands and get our jack out of there. Then go ahead and uh, pop your hood here. So with your hood pop there, it looks like we got quite a bit of stuff we're going to need to kind of get out of the way so we can access some of the uh, transmission bolts there. But uh, taking a look underneath here, you can see I already got a puddle right there. And if you look up here, you can see right there where the uh, transmission meets the uh, motor. You can see I'm leaking brake fluid. And I'm assuming that's coming from the uh, slave cylinder inside there. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but right up here, that's where the slave cylinder goes in. And then you got your bleeder line. And that looks dry up there. Um, but like I said, anytime I dry this and I park it overnight, it just uh, creates quite a bit of puddle underneath the car here and my brake fluid's getting low. So I'm assuming the uh, slave cylinder is leaking. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and get this battery out of here. Uh, your terminals will be 10 millimeters and then also your battery hold down here, 10 millimeter. And then I'm going to go ahead and just get this negative cable out of the way here. So you got an 8 millimeter. And then I like to just put bolts back where they were so you don't lose them. Same with on the uh, battery tray here. Just makes it easier so you don't lose any nuts or bolts. And then in order to get the uh, tray out, we got three. 10 millimeter bolts we need to remove. And then on the left side of the battery tray, we need to remove this uh, little cover here. And it looks like it's a uh, eight millimeter. And let's see if this just pops off here. Pull that off. And then on, before I unplug those, um, go ahead and pull this uh, bolt off here, eight millimeter, and then let's see if we can get our tray out. And then that just kind of lifts out of the tray. Uh, 
tray out of here. And then you can see that's where that uh, clipped in there. Next, we'll get our uh, air filter housing out of the way here. Uh, so let's go ahead and unplug that and zoom in here. You should be able to just take a screwdriver here, push up on that tab, and then should be able to squeeze right here. You can see there's electrical tape around that, but still be able to push in right here. Go ahead and unclip that. And then let's go ahead and uh, pull this hose off here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull this off the throttle body here. And I'm going to grab a 7 millimeter, and we'll go ahead and loosen that hose clamp here. Next, grab a Torx T25, and we'll pull off the four air filter housing screws. Let's see if we can just pull this off here. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a rag and shove a rag in there. That way no uh, dirt, debris, or uh, nuts or anything get uh, down in there. Just to be safe, go ahead and shove that in there. Go ahead and pull your air filter out. Next, go ahead and grab a flathead screwdriver and we'll gently pry on this, get it up over this lip here. Just be careful because this plastic breaks real easy here. And then I believe this just snaps out of here. This should just pop straight up. So let's go ahead and try getting that out of here. And then in order to get that air filter housing out, you got this line that uh, you can see goes to the uh, valve cover there. And the best way to get this off is to, I just take a pair of uh, needle nose pliers and just stick it on here. And then you're gonna, you're gonna pry that way and then it'll release that clip here. that off like that and then here's that line from the air filter housing going to your valve cover I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that off as well because uh, I'm gonna clean that before I uh, put everything back together I'm just gonna take some pliers and channel locks here and see if we can get this off so next I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove this bracket here uh, that way we can see our transmission mounts there. And you got three 10 millimeter bolts here, and then we also need to remove the uh, wiring harnesses here. And then it looks like there's one more clip uh, right underneath here that you'll need to remove. Kind of hard to get to. If you guys can see that or not. Next, we'll go ahead and uh, get this ground wire off of here. That's going to be a 15 millimeter. And you can also disconnect your line right here. Next, I'm going to see if I can pull off this uh, breather hose right here. Let's see if I can zoom in here. So, this hose right here, see if I can just pull that off here. that and I'll go ahead and pull this uh, 
oxygen sensor line off here. I think it's just clipped onto the transmission here. And just unclips right there. So next I'm going to go ahead and grab an 8mm. I'm going to pull off this uh, little bolt here holding this wiring harness to the transmission. So now I'll go ahead and let's pull this off right here. That should just unclip from the transmission. And then let's go ahead and release this tab from underneath here. And just unplug that little sensor there. All right, so that's pretty much all I can do from up top here, looks like. Maybe a few more things. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, go underneath, and we'll start pulling some of that stuff and also get the wheels and tires off. All right, so underneath here, uh, you got all your shift linkage in here, and there's this plastic uh, black cover here that just snaps off. You can see you got a couple snaps there, and then uh, one there, one up here, and then one on the top. So let's go ahead and snap that on off. Okay, so now taking a look at your shift linkage here. Um, for this one here, you're going to want to push. You can see how that moves. Push on that, and as you're pushing that in, you want to pull off of that. So let's see if I can do it here. So like I said, push in right here at the round part, and then that just pulls off just like that. And then to get it off of this part up here, I think we I think we're supposed to pull down on this. Grab a screwdriver here. Pull down on that and then pull out. releases that one and then for this one here you can just take something like this probably behind it and then pull that one off and then let's see if I get my camera in here kind of the same thing on that top one I'm gonna want to pull down and then we'll pull it off same thing may have to get a screwdriver up in here Once you get a screwdriver in there, you can kind of pry that down a little bit. And if you can, let's see if I can go up top. down on that and pull out and that releases those so with those off let's go ahead and uh, pull this plastic cover off here and now you got looks like there's supposed to be a bolt way in the very back there and then one up right here but as you can see mine are missing or somebody's been in here before and then uh, you got an eight millimeter right there and then there's kind of see that one on top there so like I said yeah there should have been a bolt or a screw right there and then also one right here as you can see mine are missing so I'm pull this one off so now let's go ahead and remove uh, both wheels grab your 19 millimeter All right, so once you get your wheels and tires off, you can go ahead and uh, turn this. And then uh, we'll get the tie rod off now. That's gonna be 18 millimeter. Go ahead and try and take that off. 
once you get that off we're gonna hit with the uh, mini sled right here and try to separate that from the uh, steering knuckle here that separates just like that go ahead and do the other side all right guys so as you can see this side wasn't as easy um, I tried soaking this in some PB Blaster and WD-40, that didn't work, but this nut was uh, rusted onto that tie rod so bad, um, I could barely get this nut to turn. And then uh, I tried sticking in a, I believe it was a 5 millimeter Allen head there, which you can stick in there, and then tried using a wrench to get the nut off. That wasn't working, and it just started rounding this out. So I ended up having to... Uh, use my sawzall there to cut this tie rod you can see I cut it right there and um, I also tried some vice grips right here to hold it while I tried getting the nut off that didn't work as well so ended up having to cut it with my sawzall so I'm gonna have to get a new tie rod no big deal though uh, but just make sure you guys try to soak this in some WD-40 or PB blaster to hopefully loosen that up and you don't have this problem so with our tie rods off, let's go ahead and uh, pull the axle nut. That's going to be a 32 millimeter. Next, we'll go ahead and uh, try and get this lower ball joint separated. So this side's going to be a 15 millimeter on that nut. And then you can see on the other side here, that's going to be a 13 millimeter. So let's go ahead and uh, try and get that bolt out of here. All right, so now let's go ahead and get this bolt out here. I went ahead and sprayed it, soaked it with some WD-40. Um, then just grab you a hammer, something to hit that out with. Just be careful not to damage the threads on here. Just like that. And you can see how uh, rusted that gets in there. So like I said, spray it down pretty good. So now with that bolt out, you can kind of see, um, you can get a flathead screwdriver or um, you can do like a little chisel and you want to chisel right into this uh, opening right here to help separate that and then hopefully the ball joint can drop out of there. And then like I said, you want to make sure you get plenty of uh, PB Blaster or WD-40 in there to uh, help separate that because that can rust in there pretty good. Let's see if you can just move it. And then, like I said, try to get your pry bar under here. see it separating right there Let's see if we can get it out all the way sometimes you can press down like that on it as well so once you get that separated from there kind of just move it out of the way just something like that and let's go ahead and do the other side real quick All right, guys, so as you can see, uh, you just kind of got to work with it. it. may take you a while to get that separated. You can see how that rust builds up. Pretty much just welds itself to the uh, steering knuckle there. But now that we got those out, um, and then another thing you could do 
if you can't get the uh, lower ball joint separated, you could always uh, pull off your strut bolts here and uh, also your caliper and drop it down. That way you can get the uh, CV axle out. But I think it's easier to do the uh, lower ball joint way. So before we go ahead and pull the axles out, let's go ahead and drain the transmission. Uh, here's your drain plug here. And this is gonna be your fill plug. Uh, let's see if we can get this fill plug loose first, uh, just to be safe. That's gonna be an eight millimeter. Um, Allen. And if you can get it in here. Looks like this bracket's kinda in the way. Let me see if I can just get my socket in here. There we go. All right, so at least we know we can get that out. And then let's go ahead and pull our drain plug. And I just got a pan ready to catch the transmission gear oil there. And that plug is gonna be a 19 millimeter. So go ahead and let that drain. So now let's go ahead and see if we can get this uh, axle out of the uh, hub here. And I just got a soft mallet or hammer. Uh, you don't want to damage the axle threads there. And then let's just see if we can hit on that. Trying to get the axle loosened up. And then you may need to spray a little penetrating oil in there just to help loosen that up and let's see if we can pull this whole thing out and uh, get the axle separated from here just kind of pull out with it just be careful of your brake line up here you're not stretching that too much and then you can see Got our axle kind of separated there. Still kind of same thing on this side. Just pull out. Get your axle separated just like that. So now back over here on the passenger side, let's get this CV axle out of the tranny. Um, but first we need to loosen these two uh, nuts here. Those are going to be 13 millimeter. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so now let's see if I can just pull this out of here. Might be a little hard on myself, but let's try it. Just pull that out like that. Drop it down. All right, so let's go ahead and try this on the driver's side now. And I did uh, put my drain plug back in. Uh, it was pretty much done draining. Uh, just slid it in there a little bit so it doesn't drip on me. There we go. Let's just pull that one out. Just like that. As you guys are doing that, prying, just make sure you don't damage this uh, seal going into the transmission there. All right, so back on top here now. Uh, 
we need to try to get this wiring harness out of the way here and it looks like there's a bracket here that kind of holds it on so I'm gonna go ahead and pull 13 millimeter here and then right below that on that same bracket another 13 millimeter so let me go ahead and pull those two out really quick and see if that'll uh, give us a little more room to loosen this up some And then as you can see, these both are the same size, so you don't have to worry about getting those mixed up. But those do hold the uh, transmission into the engine as well. So let's see if this bracket, so now this bracket's loose off of here. Um, still didn't really give us much room on this because this wiring harness here, back behind it, there's a bolt we need to get to in order to uh, release the transmission from the engine as well. So let me take a look and see what else we need to do to be able to get this kind of somewhat free and out of here. All right, so I think I finally figured it out. Um, trying to get this uh, plastic uh, cover that has a bunch of wires going into it um, off of this a bracket here because as you can see kind of hard to see but right back in there you can see we got a bolt we need to get out but like I said this thing here is in the way and it looks like there's a little snap here Let's see if I can get my camera in here so this little snap here, we need to uh, separate and then this whole thing should slide um, towards the driver's side here. So let me uh, put my camera up here and we'll try and uh, slide that off of there. So try to pry in here. Yeah. There we go. So now that should just kind of... There we go. Slide just enough. And now we can access our bolt back behind there. Alright, and so I just went ahead and uh, undid this off the top of the valve cover here. And then unplugged this one right here. And this sensor here as well. Because it was kind of putting a little strain on that. That way it's not too bad now. So next let's go ahead and uh, disconnect our line going into the slave cylinder there, the green one. And let me grab a pick. And I believe we just need to lift up on that and then pull out on that line. And then we'll kind of tip it up out of the way here. So like I said, I'm just going to try pick. And try and pull up on this line sticking out here. Just got to get up underneath there. Just pull up like that. And then we want to have a drip pan because you got might get some uh, brake fluid. That'll drip out of there. And then just kind of pull on this line. And it should release. See, and then you got brake fluid coming out of here. Let's see if I can just kind of tip this up out of the way here. And then, as you can see, I just put a plastic bag over that with a rubber band just to keep uh, any dirt or debris from getting into that line there. And then just kind of tuck it out of the way here. 
So now while we're up here, let's go ahead and pull the uh, those top two bolts from the engine and transmission. So your 13 millimeter there, that was behind the uh, wiring harness. And then just a little ways back behind that one, it's kind of hard to get the camera in here, but uh, let's see. You can kind of see it right back in there. See where my finger is. There's a 13 millimeter back in there as well. So you can just go in from here. And uh, let's go ahead and pull both of those out. So it looks like these two are the same size. So you got your two long ones towards the front of the engine there. And then these two top ones will be the same short ones. Okay, so down below here, um, I'm just going to break these loose. Uh, the rest of the bolts holding the transmission to the engine, I'm not going to pull them out. I just want to make sure I can break them loose. Um, and be careful doing this. Um, even though we still got, you know, this holding it on here. And then up top, we got our uh, transmission mount holding the transmission up as well. But um, like I said, I just want to break these loose. So that way, once we get the uh, transmission stable with a jack under there, and then also the engine, um, hopefully I can just undo these ones by hand. And then we'll get our uh, lower transmission mount here off. And then also the one up top. And these are going to be 13 millimeters. So it looks like we got one more just uh, right next to the catalytic converter there. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six bolts down here on the bottom part. Okay, so now that we got all those loose, let's go ahead and uh, get the transmission supported along with the uh, uh, engine as well. And then we can, we'll probably go ahead and pull off this mount first and then we'll go ahead and do the uh, top one. All right, so I'm just gonna grab a block of wood and go uh, right underneath the uh, oil pan there just to kind of support the engine there. So just kind of like that, not really jacking up on it, just supporting it. Alright, so now i got my transmission jack, um, just a Harbor Freight one. I'm not sure how well this is going to work, uh, just because the way these uh, transmissions are shaped. But go ahead and roll that under there, let's see, like I said, see how well this is going to work or not. So just something like that for now. All right, so with your engine and transmission supported, I uh, can't stress enough, make sure everything's supported really good up there. Um, especially with you climbing under here. Don't want anybody getting hurt or something falling on them. Um, next, I'm gonna re go ahead and pull this bracket here. And you got three 13 millimeter bolts. And then um, after that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull this right here. And that's going to be a Torx E12. And you can go ahead and pull your oxygen sensor off here. Just kind of tip it back there. And then looks like we got another one here. Let me, uh, yeah, let me go ahead and pull that one off too. I'm assuming that's going to be the same 13 millimeter. OK. 
Okay, like that. Now let's go ahead and uh, go back up top there. Okay, so back up top here, looking at our transmission mount, you can see, I think what I'm gonna try doing first is we got a 15 millimeter bolt here, and then we got two more right here that are going to the transmission. So I'm gonna try to loosen those ones, or get those ones out of there, and then we'll take a look. Um, we do still have the uh, bolts there at the bottom going into the transmission from the engine as well. So we'll get those probably after this. But again, um, go slowly at removing these because you don't want that transmission shifting a ton. And like I said, just be very careful, make sure everything's stable and um, you're not under there if something were to fall or anything. So like I said, I'm gonna go kind of slow at getting these off of here. You can see that transmission's already dropping a little bit. So before I go any further, let's go ahead and uh, get those bolts out down from underneath. So I'll go ahead and pull these out. Uh, might be hard now. Let me go ahead and uh, raise that transmission a little bit just to uh, help get these out some. All right, so it looks like all three of these are gonna be the same bolt. So don't have to worry too much about uh, where these go or get them uh, mixed up. So let's go ahead and do the other three on the back side there. All right guys, so these ones are all different. You can see, so the very bottom one here is gonna be the short one, and then the medium sized one is gonna be the second hole there, and then the third one's gonna be the very top one there. So make sure you don't get those uh, mixed up as well. So I was just kinda double checking, make sure I got all the bolts out, and it looks like I may missed one right here. So let me go ahead and pull that one out. And you can see this one here is way longer than the other ones. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take this last mount bolt out of here. Again, I'm gonna go real slow, uh, double check in under there, make sure nothing's getting caught up or pinched or it's just gonna come slamming down so I'm going to go real slow and then uh, keep taking a look. And as you can see, the jack's kind of holding it up for now. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and go underneath and see if we can hopefully slide the transmission sideways and drop it down. I'm hoping we have enough clearance on everything. And then while you're up here, just double check. Make sure your uh, wiring harnesses and all that's going to uh, come loose from the transmission and there's nothing else that's connected to it as well. Alright, so I'm just inspecting everything really quick again and looks like I forgot one more, you guys can see it, one more bolt right in there uh, that I somehow missed, I guess because it was hiding behind this wiring harness here. So let me go ahead and pull this one out real quick. Here's what that one looks like. All right, so I'm just gonna try and kind of get the transmission separated from the engine first. Be careful doing this. I'm just gonna try and kind of wiggle it and pull on it. And just see if we can get it somewhat separated. So 
So taking a look under here, you can kind of see starting to separate there. Looks like it's still pretty uh, tight up there. Uh, but down below here, you can see it's starting to separate. So I'm going to go ahead and do some more wiggling, especially up in this area, and see if we can get that to separate some. All right, so I shook it a little more, and you can see it kind of separated here. You can see our dowel pin there. So let me try pulling this a little more. Um, if you guys have a second hand, it really helps. Um, I may have to go call someone out here with me, but let me try getting it down by myself. All right guys, so just like that, transmission is out. Let me go ahead and get this rolled out here. I may have to pull it off here real quick so I got enough clearance here. All right, so with the transmission out, take a look here. You can see how it's just caked with uh, brake fluid. So definitely this um, slave cylinder was leaking and just pushing all that brake fluid in here. And then, Take a look here underneath at the clutch. Grab my light. And you can see that's just soaked in it as well. So that's why I bought a whole new uh, clutch kit and everything. Uh, came with a new slave cylinder. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, replace everything. So now let's go ahead and remove our pressure plate. Uh, you got a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts that we need to remove. And you can see, there's our clutch. All right, so next I'm gonna go ahead and remove the flywheel. Um, it's probably still good, I can just clean it up a little bit, but I just don't like to um, reuse a flywheel that hasn't been resurfaced. Um, I think your best bet is always to just take it to a machine shop, um, have it resurfaced or get a new one, just to be safe. So grab yourself a 17 millimeter and we're gonna go ahead and uh, remove all them bolts right there. And just rock it back and forth. Let me get up there. So like I said, um, it doesn't look too bad. It seems like it's pretty even all the way around and I don't see any blue um, discoloration or anything like it got too hot. Um, so like I said, I'll probably be okay just cleaning it up, but uh, I like to be safe than sorry. And um, I'll take this to my local machine shop here in town. I think it's about 60 bucks or so. And um, after that, we'll go ahead and uh, start installing everything. And then also, while I'm waiting on that flywheel, I'm going to go ahead and get this all cleaned up as well. Just using some brake clean, uh, clean that up as best as I can. Alright, so it's been a few days. Uh, I've been trying to uh, squeeze some time in here in the evenings to get this uh, put back together. But as you can see, you got the uh, flywheel back here uh, from the machine shop. 
so that looks good and then also you can see got the transmission all cleaned up got rid of all that old brake fluid that was soaked in here so now we should be ready to uh, pull this old slave cylinder before I do that though I'll show you so this is the uh, clutch set that I got it's the luck rep set pro and this is the complete kit and you can see part number 07-232 and check out the description I'll put a link in that so you guys can check that out to this exact set just open it real quick here you can see it comes with a new pressure plate uh, below that kind of see it's gonna be the new clutch and then in here there's our new slave cylinder and then also includes the alignment tool and then also some lube uh, for the splines as well so go ahead and grab a eight millimeter and we got three bolts we need to remove and these shouldn't be on there very tight at all get those three out and then just go ahead and pull it straight out. Okay, so once you get that all cleaned up, go ahead and grab your uh, spline lubricant that they give you. And open that up. And I'm just going to run some on the splines here. Grab a new slave cylinder. Stick that through your two holes here. Which I'm surprised there isn't like a extra cover here to help keep moisture out of here, but I'm not sure why they didn't put something there. Grab your eight millimeter bolts. Let's go ahead and get these hand tight and then we will torque them. Once you get those hands tight, uh, this doesn't take very much torque at all. It's going to be uh, 97 inch pounds. So next, let's go ahead and uh, get our freshly turned flywheel back on. And of course, this can only go one way. go ahead and grab your flywheel bolts and now you're supposed to use uh, brand new ones discard your old ones um, I've reused mine plenty of times before and never had any issues so kind of leave that up to you guys um, but I do put some red Loctite on them and um, just inspect them make sure they're still in good shape which mine are so I'm gonna go ahead and reuse them um, it's not like this Ford Fiesta is pushing out 500 horsepower, so, you know, it's not too big of a deal to reuse your flywheel bolts on this kind of car. So go ahead and get those all in and started by hand. And then grab a 17 millimeter, and I'll go ahead and get these all tightened up by hand, and then we'll torque them. Okay, so once you get those all tight, next we're going to have to uh, torque them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab just my little pry bar here. And I'm going to try and wedge it over here. Kind of like that. And then bring it up here. Try to get it into one of the uh, flywheel tooth there. So kind of like that. 
And as you guys are doing this, just be very careful. You don't want to break a tooth off your flywheel. Uh, so using a sturdy screwdriver or, like I said, this pry bar. I'm going to try this and hopefully it works. Um, they do make a hold holding tool. Uh, Ford makes it, but it's it's like $97 or 100 bucks just for a tool to hold this flywheel, which comes in handy for someone that works on these all the time. But um, if you're just doing it yourself, hopefully this method works. And uh, you're going to do it in two stages. Um, you're going to tighten it to 22 uh, foot-pounds each one. And you're going to go around 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then you're going to do a second stage, starting at 1 again. And you're going to do an extra 80 degrees on each bolt. So let's go ahead and uh, give that a shot. So let's go ahead and torque and just keep an eye on that tooth there. Uh, if you see it to start slip, um, go ahead and back off. Cause like I said, you don't want to break a tooth. So 22 foot pounds. Let's see if this is going to work or not. So there's one and we'll go to two. Three, four, five, and six. Now I'll grab my other ratchet and we'll go uh, 80 more degrees. So starting back at one and we'll go 80 degrees and then 80 degrees is just about a quarter of a turn. And you can see that moving. Just about like that. Number two. Three. four, five, and six. Then you should be able to remove your pry bar here. If it didn't turn on you too much, you may have to just move it back some. So now before I go ahead and put the clutch on and pressure plate, I'm going to go ahead and take some spray uh, brake cleaner, go ahead and spray this flywheel real quick because you can see I got a lot of fuzzy stuff on here and uh, possibly some grease and oil. Alright, so go ahead and grab your clutch and then once again take note of the gearbox side which is going to be out towards the driver's side. And then go ahead and grab your alignment tool. Go ahead and stick that through the clutch and then uh, go ahead and stick this through there. Just watch it, make sure that doesn't fall. Go ahead and grab your new pressure plate. And then on this particular clutch here, or pressure plate, I think the letters go down. You just need to make sure you line up all three of your dowel pins and then also all of your pressure plate bolts are going to line up as well. So go ahead and stick that on over your alignment tool here. Get your dowels lined up and then you may have to move this alignment tool a little bit to get that clutch seated in there. Then check your dowel pins here, make sure they're all in. So it should be good right there. And then just make sure that ain't gonna fall. Grab your new bolts. And once again, you're supposed to use new ones on the pressure plate as well. Again, I've never had issues using the old ones. Um, 
But once again, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some red Loctite on these. And I'll leave that up to your guys' discretion whether you want to replace the uh, pressure plate bolts or not. I just wish the kits were to include them, but they don't. So I'm reusing mine. And I'll go ahead and get all these started and uh, somewhat tightened by hand. And then we'll go ahead and torque everything. And then as you guys are tightening these by hand, um, you can see the clutch back behind the pressure plate here in some of these holes. And you just want to make sure that clutch is lined up uh, correctly with the uh, pressure plate. So you just want to make sure it's even on uh, each side as you're tightening these up. And then we'll do our final torque after that. So as you guys are tightening these by hand, you want to make, you can look in these little holes here and see the clutch back behind the pressure plate there. You just want to make sure that's lined up uh, correctly before you go ahead and start tightening these all the way. Um, we'll do the final torque here at the end. But like I said, just make sure it's uh, even exactly in the middle of the uh, pressure plate here. And then for tightening them, you want to start at one, then you're going to go down to two, and then you're going to go up to three, and then four, five, and then six. And then go ahead and grab your torque wrench, and we're going to do them in the same sequence, and that's going to be uh, 21 foot pounds. So, again, we'll start at one. Okay, with those torqued, you can go ahead and remove your alignment tool here. Alright, so now we should be ready to uh, go ahead and get the transmission back up in the engine bay. And then also, if your guys' axle seals are leaking, now would be the perfect time to replace them. Uh, both of mine were, were fine. I don't have any issues with them, so I'm not going to replace them, but... If your guys' are, go ahead and replace those before you get the transmission back up in there. Got my transmission jack here ready. And if you guys have a second hand, um, it really helps getting this back up in there. But I'm going to go ahead and try it by myself again first. If not, I'll go grab a hand. Alright guys, so as you saw, it takes a little time to get that up in there. Uh, you can see I got that one started in there, and then one just below there, and then a few at the bottom. And it's hard to see, but the other one I got started up here as well. So before I go ahead and start putting the rest of the bolts in and tightening these, um, I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, motor mount bolts back in first. Just to give that transmission a little more support. So let's go ahead and get these uh, put back in. Once you get those somewhat started, grab your 15 millimeter. And let's just go ahead and tighten these a little bit more to help bring that transmission up. But I'm not going to fully torque them yet. OK, 
Okay, now let's go down below and uh, check out that transmission mount and see if we can get that in. All right, so down below here, since we got uh, those motor or uh, transmission mounts started on the top there, and then we got a lot of these bolts started here, um, I think we're safe to uh, go ahead and lower this transmission jack and uh, we'll get that uh, rear transmission mount on really quick. So go ahead and lower this. Again, just go kind of slow. If you see anything shifting, stop. Um, like I said, I think we'll be okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the uh, rear transmission mount here back on. Alright, it's hard for me to see that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, lower this engine jack here really quick. So like I said, we should be able to uh, lower the engine one here as well. Um, like I said, I just can't get to that back one to see uh, where that bolt's going in. So again, just lower this one slowly. Alright, now i got a better angle at getting up in here and you can see it's not really lining up so I'm going to take a probe pry bar right here and let's just see if I can move this mount some it's kind of like that just to get it started and then I'll go ahead and put in that last uh, top one up there and that'll be the uh, longer one remember you had the short medium and then long one let me just get that one started up here so again before I start tightening all these um, I'm gonna go back up top make sure I got every single bolt in for the bell housing and then we'll go ahead and start tightening everything all right so I got most of the top ones in here um, I got these two long ones. Again, these are going to go uh, for this bracket right here, the top and bottom part of that, and they'll they'll go on there like that. So get these started in there. I just want to make sure I get all these started before I start tightening up. Okay, with those started, um, I think what I'll do now is grab my 13 millimeter and I'll just go ahead and start tightening. I'm going to do a, a couple up top and then go down bottom on the side to kind of pull the transmission to the engine all the way without getting it cockeyed. So I want to kind of do like almost a star shape pattern on uh, tightening those all these uh, bell housing bolts. And then when we go to torque, those are all going to be torqued to uh, 35 foot-pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this by hand just to be safe and uh, get these tightened here. And also, guys, I don't know if I mentioned it, but... Don't forget your uh, black bracket that goes behind uh, that bolt and then the other one over here. All right, so while I'm down here, I'll go ahead and tighten the rest of these up. And uh, again, this is going to be the uh, Torx E12. And then, of course, your 13 millimeters. All 
Then grab your torque wrench, and uh, all four of these are going to be 52 foot pounds. And then before I go ahead and put the uh, O2 sensor bracket back on uh, this bolt here, I'm going to go ahead and torque um, the case bolts here. And those are going to be 35 foot pounds, just to give me a little more access right here. If I can get it on this one up here, not sure yet. Yeah, so I'm going to be able to get my torque wrench on that one. And looks like. Yeah, I won't be able to on that one as well. So let me go ahead and torque this one then. And I'm just gonna go off, have to go off a feel on these ones. So then go ahead and grab your oxygen sensor here. That's gonna go like that. And if you guys are interested, um, I did replace this oxygen sensor uh, a few weeks ago. So if your uh, your uh, downstream oxygen sensor is going bad, I got a video showing you how to replace this one. If you're interested, grab your 13 millimeter nut. And go ahead and tighten that. And if you want, you can use your torque wrench. I think it's like 18 foot-pounds, but I'm not too worried about that. And I'll go ahead and finish torquing these to 35 foot-pounds. So now with our engine to transmission bolts all torqued down to 35 foot-pounds, let's go ahead and do our transmission mounts. Uh, these three bolts, the 15 millimeters, let's go ahead and tighten them the rest of the way and we will torque them to 66 foot-pounds. All right, so now let's go ahead and do the uh, driver's side CV axle, stick that back in there. And then also make sure this little snap ring uh, is still on there. Make sure that stayed in place while you were removing it. Then just make sure it's clean. You don't want any of that gunk in your uh, transmission. So go ahead and stick the transmission side in first. And you may have to go in and out a few times just to get those splines lined up correctly. Um, once you get it in there, it should click. You should hear a click when you get it in there. Just like that, you hear it click so you know you're in. And then uh, let's go ahead and do the uh, steering knuckle side of it. Let's go ahead and pull your strut and all that outward. And then go ahead and shove that through your steering knuckle. Once you get that somewhat through, go ahead and grab your axle nut, screw that on, and then let's, uh, while we're down here, let's go ahead and see if we can lift this steering knuckle, steering knuckle up um, over the ball joint there, or bring down your control arm.
just like that. And we have to just hit on it. So you can see all joints back in place as well. All right, so on the passenger side, go ahead and grab your CV axle. And uh, this side here um, doesn't have the snap ring on it, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, let's go ahead and stick this in. And then make sure you got this little bracket on here for your uh, bearing right here. Just like the other side, Let's see if we can get lined up. And that clicks in, and take your bracket, and slide that over. And then go ahead and grab your bearing cap here, and your two nuts. Get them started. And then let's go ahead and torque these two nuts here. And those are uh, 13 millimeter. And those are going to be just 18 foot pounds. Then go ahead and grab your uh, ball joint bolts and your nut. And get that through. Grab your torque wrench and you're going to tighten this or torque it to uh, 38 foot pounds. And then I'm going to grab my 33 millimeter, just tighten this with an impact. Um, I'll just get it somewhat tight. And then uh, once we get the wheels on the ground, we'll go ahead and torque it to 188 foot pounds. You can go ahead and grab your tie rod in. Stick that through there. Grab your 18 millimeter nut. Grab your torque wrench and you're going to torque this to 39 foot pounds. All right, so if you guys remember, um, my tie rod broke on this side. Um, actually, the nut was pretty much rusted on, so I had to cut it off. So now I got a new tie rod in, I'm going to stick on there. Um, and to do that, you want to grab a crescent wrench, which is going to go right here on the tie rod end get that nice and tight and then take a 22 millimeter and we're going to loosen this jam nut on the back side here Let's see if I can do it from here let me get underneath there Okay, so with that somewhat loose, what you want to do is uh, it goes like that. You're going to count the number of turns you do to get this uh, tie rod off. So you go, there's one full turn, two, three. It's about 19 and a half and we end right about right there. So let me go grab our new one there. And 
I just went with the Moog. Um, part number ES801173. And then as you can see, it's exactly the same length. So let's go ahead and stick that on. And again, we left off right about right here. So we'll do half a turn and now we'll do 19 full turns. So now let me go ahead and tighten that. Once you get that tight, let's go ahead and stick our nut on. So it looks like that's going to be an 18 millimeter, and again, we'll go to 39 foot pounds. And it looks like that might be turning on me. Yep. So if that starts turning on you, Grab a normal 18 millimeter and looks like a five millimeter Allen head. And just go ahead and tighten it as much as you can. And then also don't forget, if you guys do go with the Moog, uh, you got a grease fitting, which just screws in with an eight millimeter. And then I went ahead and gave it some grease as well. All right, so back up top here, let's put together some more of this stuff. Um, grab your little eight millimeter bolt here for this uh, bracket that uh, bolts onto the transmission there. Let's go ahead and stick that on there. So once again, kind of hard to see, but it slides on there. You see that tab right there. Let's go ahead and push that. And that just clicks on like that. All right, so next, go ahead and take our um, line going to our slave cylinder. Let me grab a pick real quick. Because it looks like a... Got to pull out that tab like we did on the original one there. Get up under that clip. And remove the cap. And discard that. Grab my line here. that down in there I should be able to stick that in and push that in and then press down on the clip and then you can see that's holding that in there next go ahead and grab a 15 millimeter and your bolt, let's connect this ground wire here. Next we'll go ahead and grab our breather tube. Get this out of the way here. And it's gonna be 
uh, this one here. So go ahead and stick that on right up there. And then you go ahead and plug in a couple sensors up here. Get that back on there. All right, so back down below here. Um, before I go ahead and start putting our linkage and all that on, I'm going to go ahead and fill this up now uh, since we got room here. I went ahead and tightened the drain plug, which is your 19 millimeter. Just hand tighten that. And then go ahead and pull your fill plug here. And this calls for 2.3 quarts. And you'll want to use the Ford Motorcraft fully synthetic transmission uh, manual fluid. Uh, this stuff here is like $30 a quart. I had to get three of them. So expect to spend quite a bit on three quarts of this stuff. Uh, so make sure you don't waste it. And uh, I'll put a link in the description on this stuff as well. And then the way I'm going to use it is I got this little like pump um, that fits on these quart bottles and I can just pump it up in there. If you need to, you can also get um, just like a piece of clear hose and then hook it to a funnel from up top there and then fill it into this uh, little hole here. So let's go ahead and uh, start filling it. All right guys, so as you saw, um, that took right at pretty much 2.3 quarts. Um, and you can see it has a steady flow coming out of it right now. I'm just gonna let that kind of get down to a drip and then I'll go ahead and uh, put my um, filler plug back in and tighten that up. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and spray some brake cleaner on there. Then we go ahead and plug in our reverse here. And then this little clip, this clip's on right there. Next we'll go ahead and uh, grab the back part of the uh, shift linkage cover here. I remember how that went on. Just like that. Grab your four eight millimeter bolts. And when I started this, I was missing a couple, so I went ahead and grabbed a just a couple more bolts here. get those started Push right on there. Then grab your other one here. And kind of the same thing. And pull this apart. Snaps on there. 
there and then just that little ball valve there pushes right on there snaps right in just like that grab your cover and then also up above here and get my camera up there got this little line here that you can snap on to this line here for your breather hose just kind of like that grab your cover Just like that. Next, go ahead and put your battery box bracket and your air filter housing bracket back on top here. clips back in here next we'll go ahead and uh, put our little hose that goes to the air filter housing and then on top of the valve cover here and stick that on hose clamp here in place grab your air filter housing and go ahead and stick that back on there you can have a rag in the place and go ahead and snap that back in and then you also got your little clips here too and go ahead and grab your top of your air filter housing there So throw my air filter back in here. Then go ahead and tighten up your air filter housing bolts. Um, that's going to be a Torx T25. Then plug in your vacuum hose here going from your brake bleeder or your brake booster. Stick that back on there. And then you can also plug in your mass airflow sensor here.
All right, so before we go ahead and put the battery tray back in, I forgot. Um, so on this negative ground wire here that goes to the transmission, I forgot to put this bracket back on that. So let me go ahead and pull that 15 millimeter here. And go ahead and grab your bracket here. Slide that under there. Next, go ahead and grab your battery tray. Get that sat in there. Grab your three 10 millimeter bolts. And we'll go ahead and mount our little computer here. Next, go ahead and get your battery in. So now we'll go ahead and stick both wheels and tires back on. Um, before we do that, let's go ahead and move our center caps from our wheels. Just push out on those. That way we can uh, torque our CV axle nut. Uh, with that off and the wheel on the ground. All right, guys, so as you can see, uh, I got both wheels and tires back on. So, what I'm going to do next is go ahead and uh, jack it up. We'll get it lower to the ground, I'll torque the wheels, and then I'm going to actually roll it out away from the wall here. That way, I got a little bit easier access to get in out of the driver door there so we can uh, go ahead and bleed the slave cylinder and everything. So now go ahead and grab your torque wrench, grab your 33 millimeter socket. We're going to tighten up that axle nut there and that's going to be 188 foot pounds. Then go ahead and grab your 19 millimeter and we'll tighten the lug nuts to 80 foot pounds. Alright guys, so now we should be ready to go ahead and start bleeding the system. Um, and according to Ford, uh, you know you got your brake fluid where you fill right here. And it comes down into your master cylinder which shares with the brake and the clutch system. Um, Ford is saying that we need to drain this master cylinder. Zoom in here. Until you're at the minimum line. Um, now I haven't touched this. This is just what was left over and you can see I'm pretty much right at that minimum line or maybe a little over there. So we should be good on that. Um, and then from there, we're going to grab a bleeder such as like a mighty vac vacuum style one. And then we're going to hook onto the slave cylinder and show you here. I got the mighty vac. MV8500. I just got this off Amazon. Um, I'll put a link in the description if you guys are interested in that. But they are saying we need to push new fluid into that uh, new slave cylinder. And they're saying to fill this up to four ounces with your new brake fluid. I just went with the Valvoline DOT 3 and 4 brake fluid. And they're saying to pump that new fluid into the slave cylinder and then shut the valve. And then we'll get in the car and start it up and uh, go ahead and go through the gears there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, jack this up a little bit so I can crawl under there. Give you guys a little better access to see. Um, if you want, you could probably do this from up top. Uh, but I'm just going to make it so you guys can see with the camera there. And so really quick here, I'll show you. This is the old slave cylinder that I pulled out. And... Um, so this, you'll have a dust cap on here, which you'll want to remove. Then we'll go ahead and stick on our tube from our Mighty Vac. And then this means it's closed when it's all the way up. And then if you turn it counterclockwise all the way down until it stops, that means the valve's open. So we can go ahead and start pumping brake fluid in. 
And then once we pump in all four ounces, we'll go ahead and close this. That closes the valve and then we'll remove our vacuum pump here. All right guys, so instead of just jacking it up, um, I went ahead and removed this air filter housing again. And again, that just pops off here and then pretty much just lifts out and then pull off your uh, throttle body tube there. So now you can see just a lot easier to reach down in here to get to that uh, slave cylinder bleeder valve there. All right, so go ahead and pull your dust cap. Grab your bleeder hose, along with your fresh new brake fluid filled. Stick that on there. Go ahead and open this valve now. Okay, and go ahead and start pumping. Okay, so once you get almost all four ounces or 3.38, go ahead and close your valve. Alright guys, so I went ahead and sprayed some brake cleaner and then also put my dust cap back on there really quick. And come around here, you can see pretty much used almost all that four ounces there. Um, and then looking up over here, you can see the master cylinder now. That portion of it is full. But if you come around here to where we need to fill it, you can see we're still not full there. So I'm going to have to add some to the max full line here. But uh, before I do that, let me go ahead and put this back together. Now with that all put back together, go ahead and top off your brake fluid here. I think right about there. Place your cap. All right, guys. So now I'm in the vehicle, and as you can see on here, after we add uh, fluid to the reservoir, it says note carefully move the gear shift lever into reverse. Uh, so it looks like we need to start the engine. After two seconds, press the clutch pedal and carefully move the gear shift lever into reverse. And if you hear any noises, looks like we need to. Um, automatically bleed the clutch control system by pressing the clutch pedal four to five times uh, during bleeding full travel the clutch pedal must be reached and then uh, test the operation of the clutch control system again after 30 seconds if there are still abnormal noises uh, we're going to have to perform the uh, bleed procedure again so let's go ahead and give it a shot here so go ahead and start it, add it in neutral. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my foot on the clutch, slowly put it in reverse here. Okay. So in reverse, and then I'm just going to push on the clutch four to five times here. And 
I'm not really hearing any noises like it says abnormal noises and let me just try and go through each gear here first second third fourth fifth and let's try reverse again just like that And then, uh, so let me go ahead and shut it off and we'll try it again like here. It says um, after 30 seconds. And then just double check, make sure uh, you don't got any leaks down there from the uh, slave cylinder. And looks like we're okay on that end of it. And then also double check your reservoir here. You can see still at the max there. All right, so it's been about 30 seconds here. We'll go ahead and start it again. Release my brake. And let's go ahead and put it in reverse. And I'm just gonna slowly let off and see if it's working. So there's reverse. Put it in first here. And yeah, let's try reverse again. Alright guys, so I think that's working. Not hearing any weird noises or anything. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this for a spin real quick. And then I'll be back. Alright, so I just got back from a little bit of a drive. Clutch feels great and uh, not hearing any abnormal noises or anything. I look back under there just to check for any leaks and everything looks good. So I think that's gonna do it for the video. Hopefully this helps you out, save you some money doing it yourself. Uh, if you guys got any questions or anything, feel free to put in the comment section below. I'll try to answer those as quick as I can. And again, this was a 2011 Ford Fiesta. Went ahead and replaced the clutch along with the slave cylinder and then bled everything. And um, as always, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Check out my other videos. I've got a few on this car alone. And uh, thanks for watching.